أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Respected elders and brothers As we have finished of course Surah Yunus last week Now we move towards the 11th Surah in the Quran And we are in the 11th Juz And today we will be finishing that as well And moving into the 12th Juz of the Quran This is Surah Al-Hud Which one day in regards to it It's a Makki Surah And when we say it's a Makki Surah We mean there will be some certain qualities about it That are uh, seldomly found in the Madani Surahs That is first of all the uh, more of the Bayan and Tawheed The oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Secondly the proving of the Risalat, the Nabuwat, the Prophethood of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Thirdly, Qiyamat, speaking about the proofs and the ability and the strength of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that Qiyamat can possibly take place. This was something the Mushrik in Mecca had rejected. So these are the qualities of the Mecca Surahs, which uh, uh, is those Surahs which of course were revealed before Hijrah. This surah is called Surah Hud because it will be uh, mentioned in it Hud alayhi salam and his people. Later on in the surah we will do that. One day Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was sitting and seemed to notice that the hairs of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, some strands of it had become white. So Nabi, uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu then asked Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam that, Oh Nabi, now what is going on? You're getting old and the streaks of you know, white hair are there in your, in your beard and in your hair. So, uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Shayyabatni hud wa akhawatuha. Surah Hud and its sisters, which many of the ulama have said, uh, Surah Waqi'ah, Amma Yatasalun, Surah Al-Taqweer, those surahs which are talking about the Ummah Misadaqah, those nations from before and their punishment, and those surahs which are talking about the day of Qiyamah and the great signs and the things that will happen right before the day of Qiyamah, these surahs have made my hair white because of the uh, you know, horrifying ayat and the way those people from before had gotten punished and the possibility that my nation also may be punished like that and maybe go through, go through those things. That has made my hair white and it's not because of my age, but because of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which has been driven into my heart through these surahs. So this is Surah Hud, one of those surahs which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned. In the first ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Alif Lam Ra. And we know from before, we've done this, that these are called the Huruful Muqatta'at. Muqatta'at, Qata'a means to be cut. And the reason why it is called that is because each harf is uh, recited separately. We're not going to say a la ra, but we're going to actually say alif, lam, and ra. Qata'a. Each each one is cut open and recited uh, separately. And this is a sign towards the ijaz, the miracle of Quran. The the, um, the mufassirin usually do not make tafsir of these. The meaning is known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul. But the maqsad and the purpose has been explained by the Mufassireen that, O oh Arab, you also speak the language of Arabic. Right? You also speak the language of Arabic and you speak it very eloquently. And we have recited such letters that you do not even know the meaning of them. Produce even these type of letters. These are not even words also. Alif Lam Ra, Alif Lam Mim. Kaf, ha, ya, ain, sort. These type of, you know, huruf uh, they're not even words. You produce something like this, say meme scene or something like this, and you cannot even produce these type of huruf muqatta'at as well. Uh, some Mufassirin say that when these huruf muqatta'at started coming, so they had some type of the mushikeen and the Yahud also, they had some type of mathematical way they used to say that these uh, letters. They mean the death of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is coming close now. So when things like Yasin came and Alif Lamim and you know first it was you know Saad and Qaf, 
So there it seemed to be a short while Nabi Sam will be around. Then Alif La Mim, then now it's a little bit longer. Now four letters, and then it's one calf, Ha Ya Ain Sin the Surah Maryam came. Then they said, forget it, that's not the it looks like Nabi is gonna be around for a long time. So Alif Lam Ra, Allah Ta'ala knows the best. Uh, what it means, and his Rasul knows what it means as well. And this does not take away any type of, you know, any type of grandeur and greatness from the Qur'an, even though we don't know the meaning of it. Some ulama give the example and say, it's as if I told you that next week there won't be any tafsir. Next week, there will not be any tafsir class. Now, the maqsad and the purpose you have understood. That next week, after Aisha, we shouldn't sit because uh, Mawlana Mikhail is not going to come, we won't have tafsir class. Now we can organize our dinner that day, or we can go back home, or we can read whatever we did last week and go over those ayat. Why I'm not coming, the reason I'm not coming, if I don't tell you that, it really doesn't make a difference. In the same way, Alif Lam Ra is tanzil from Allah Ta'ala. It has come down. And the maqsad and purpose we know, that Allah Ta'ala knows what it means, His Rasul knows what it means as well. We don't know what it means, that doesn't really matter. It's not really a big deal for those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah ta'ala after this says, Kitabun uhkimat ayatuhu thumma fussilat min ladun hakim al This is such a book, kitabun, meaning Al-Quran. Such a book, uhkimat ayatu. It's ayat, meaning the sentences, each ayat which you are reading, have been established. They have been made perfect. Thumma fusilat. Then they have been explained. Milla dun hakim in khabir. From he who is all wise and he who is all informed. Now, what does this mean? Ulama have said different things about uhkimat ayatuhu thumma fusilat. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he says this points to the fact that the Quran is the akhiri kitab. It's the last book. Uhkimat ayatuhu thumma fusilat means that there are no type of ahkam, no type of laws in this book that will become mansukh like the books from before. The Torah had ahkam in it also, but the Bible, the Injil, made it mansukh, it abrogated it. Once those, the Injil came, then the Torah was no more. And the Injil also had such you know, ahkam and laws in it that lasted only until the coming of the Qur'an. Now since the Qur'an has come, the Injil also has become mansukh and abrogated. Its ahkam and laws are no more applying on insan. But the Qur'an is not like this. The Qur'an's ahkam have been established and made firm by Allah Ta'ala. And they have been explained completely in such a way that these are the last ahkam, the last laws that will come on insan and they will last until the day of Qiyam. So Ibn Abbas says that this is an ishara and an indication towards the fact that the Qur'an is the final book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some ulama beautifully say, Uhkimat ayatu is pointing towards the love, the words of the Qur'an. That the words of the Qur'an are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are perfect. There is no mistake in them. Whether it be the letters itself and how they put together, or whether it be the grammatical structure of the sentences, according to Arabic, which we call Nahwan Sarf, the grammar, they are all complete and they are perfect in the Quran. Thumma Fusilat, not only the words, but the meaning which was given to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all the meaning that is in Quran also that has been explained, that also is perfect as well. So what we call love wa ma'ana. The love, the words of Qur'an are complete and perfect, and also the meaning of Qur'an is also complete and perfect as well. Other ulama say that uhkimat ayatu, uhkimat ayatu points towards the ahkam, the laws of the Qur'an. Different laws, for example, aqimu salat, wa'atu zakat, uh, you know, the ahkam of nikah. All these different things have now been established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thumma fussilat. Then they have been explained. Explained in what way? If it is something which Allah ta'ala has told you to do, so there's a wada for it, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised the reward, 
And also if it's something he's told you not to do, then there are wa'id. So basically, uhkimat ayatuhu means ahkam, the laws and rules of the Quran. And fusilat means al-wa'da wal wa'id. Meaning the promises that Allah Ta'ala has given in the Quran of reward and wa'id and the warnings Allah Ta'ala has given in the Quran in which now is telling us to stay away because there will be some type of punishment for us. So these are the different types of tafsirs that the ulama have given in regards to uhkimat ayatuhu thumma fussilat. Peer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says that where has this come from? Min ladun hakim in khabir. It has come from he who is Hakim, who is the all-wise. Each eye has come, by, come to us from he who is the all-wise, full of wisdom. Each each eye he has sent down, he has sent for a reason. And hikmat is such, which we call uh, any hikmat. When a person says someone is wise, it actually means isaba, to be correct. So every single thing Allah Ta'ala has sent down is from he who's always correct. He has the hikmat and he has the wisdom. So even if a person understands some ayat of Allah Ta'ala to be maybe wrong, na'udhu billah, or he doesn't understand it, he should know that it's from the hikmat of Allah Ta'ala and Allah Ta'ala knows something that you don't know and that's why it's completely perfect and it is actually true. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is khabir. He's the all-informed. That's why his ahkam, and especially it is the shan and the sign of deen also. This is only the deen of Islam. That Allah Ta'ala has revealed this Quran and with this sifat and this quality of khabir. He's the well-informed. Meaning each ayat Allah Ta'ala knew the halat and the conditions of this insan. From the time it came down to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam till the day of Qiyamah. He knew what conditions insan would be in. That's why Allah Ta'ala is the all informed and these ayat, they can comply and they can agree with any time and any person, anywhere he lives to the day of Qiyamah. Because Allah Ta'ala is khabir. He's informed about the halat and the conditions of the people in America. He also knows how they live in Bangladesh. He knows what's going on in Africa and in Syria and Sham. He knows the people who are handicapped and the people who are healthy. He knows those who are blind and those who can see. Each, each thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, He's informed of them. So that's why the ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are perfect in this way, that they can apply to every single person, and every person is able to make the, you know, the amal and do the action upon them, because it has been sent down from He, who is khabir, who is the all-informed. There's no na'udhu billah, jahalat and ignorance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, na'udhu billah, that he send a hukum down and someone could stand up and say that Allah doesn't know my condition, that hukum is wrong, it can't apply to me. No. All the ahkam, salat, zakat, everything can apply to anyone at any time. After this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Allah ta'abudu illallah. Innani lakum minhu wa bashir. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about the Quran and its ahkam and the explanation of the ayat and that it's come from Him. So now what is the maqsad and the purpose of each ayat which is coming down? Because some of them are very clear and some of them are with a lot of tafsil and a lot of explanation. Whether it is a short ayat, which is very simple, or whether it is a ayat which is full of explanation, and we can sit here nights explaining it, the end point is that you are supposed to worship only one Allah. That's why Allah Ta'ala says, Allah ta'abudu illallah. That you don't worship anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it's the ahkam of nikah, whether it's the ahkam of hajj, salat, whatever it may be that's mentioned in Quran, the end point and the maqsad and what has been squeezed out, like you squeeze an orange and the juice that comes out. And the purpose behind it is that ibarat of only one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That at the end of the day, you can only be worshipping one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to worship Him and how to follow these Qur'an, these muhkam ayat, these mufassal ayat, how are we going to follow them? Only through the Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah Ta'ala after this mentions, إِنَّنِي لَكُمْ مِنْهُ نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ 
Here before Inani, there is something which is what we call mahzuf, something which has been dropped off, which is understood. Because Inani lakum minhu nadhiru mubin, we have read before these type of ayat, and we know that it is always the Rasuls of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who say this to their people. That verily I am for you a warner and a giver of glad tidings. So before this ayat, we can say that it says, وَقُلْنَا لِلنَّبِي إِنَّنِي And we said to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you tell the people, إِنَّنِي لَكُمْ مِنْهُ نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ That verily I, for you, for your benefit, this was the Nabi of Allah Ta'ala, what he's been told to Allah Subhanahu wa that go and tell this to the people. That verily I am for you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is who Hakim al Khabir. I am from him, and what have I come as? Nadir. I've come as a warner. I've come to tell you if you disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that wait, awaiting for you is a punishment. And if you do not do good deeds, that punishment will grab you. Wa Bashir, and I'm also a giver of glad tidings to those people who happen to be leaving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm here to tell them that shabash, very good job, and this is for you, jannat, and the good beautiful things of the paradise are for you, which was what the Anbiya came with, they came with Nadir and Bashir, that they would warn the people, and at the same time give them glad tidings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions something else very important for the insan, وَأَنِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ يُمَتِّعْكُمْ مَتَاعًا حَسَنًا إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّا إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّا وَيُؤْتِكُ الَّذِي فَضْلٍ فَضْلًا وَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ كَبِيرٍ Allah Ta'ala then mentions after this, وَأَنِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ Another hukum from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala for this insan, because after he has mentioned about his muhkam and tafseel ayat, and after he's mentioned that he's hakim and khabir, and that you should only worship one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the Nabi will show you how to do that, and obviously because this Qur'an is munazzal, and it has come down on us, insan, وَخُلِقَ insanu ضَعِيفَ And we have been created very weak. We will not be able to fulfill all the rights of these ayat, and along the way we will make some mistakes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the advice here, that fill your ibadat and your worship with those two things that will get rid of all the nooks and all of the problems that you have in your worship and the sins that you do, and that is istighfar and tawbah. Wa an rabbakum, and that you should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thumma tubu, and repent to Him. Basically, istighfar and tawbah are very close in their meanings. The ulama have given the difference of them. That istighfar is khas, and it's very, very specific with the sins that are done in the past. Astaghfirullah. Meaning whatever I've done in the past, oh Allah, forgive me for what I've done. And tawbah, even though it also includes that, that you are saying about what you've done in the past, but tawbah is also, and the highlighting factor of tawbah, is that in Tawbah you are making a pakka azm, you are making a strong intention that in the ayinda, that in the future, I will inshallah not do this again. Right? Islahi, yani islahi ma kan is the istighfar, wa islahi ma yakun, that will be the Tawbah. To correct and rectify that which is in the past is istighfar, and Tawbah is to correct that which is in the past also but more to the extent that now in my future, tomorrow, and after that, I, you know, I rub my face and finish my dua, and I finish crying to you, that inshallah in the future, I will not return back to those sins. And this is something that even Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though he was masoom, that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Aisha radiallahu anha used to say, قَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكْ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ Allah Ta'ala has forgiven your past sins and your future sins. The ulama have said that Aisha saying this is not implying that Nabi Sam had some sins. 
But this actually was the same type of statement which means that he's masoom. He's got no sins. But yet Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith of Bukhari he mentions that inni astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh akthara min mi'ata marra. And some ulama say, some hadith say, a mi'ata marra. I make istighfar. I make tawbah for my past sins. And I make the, you know, the tawbah for the future also. That I will make sure that I stay on tawbah more than 100 times. This Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is doing this. Subhanallah. The question arises that why would Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have to make tawbah? Why would he do that? So the ulama mentioned, and one muhawada that we can mention, is you get the cheeseburger, you get the double cheeseburger also, right? Double cheeseburger is even better than a cheeseburger. Cheeseburger to tiki, mashallah, water cha. It's very nice. But double cheeseburger? La ilaha illallah. So nice. So noorun ala noor, right? Sometimes the car is clean, but you see the guy, he goes in the car wash and washes his Lexus again. Right? It's clean already. He went there. Some people have big, you know, jazba for their car. Very strong love for their car. So Wednesday they got the, you know, the wash. Friday they're going out again. You see him in the washing machine again. And he's bothering the guy and he's doing it again, making sure it's clean. Right? More clean. Saf shafaf, they say, right? In Urdu? Saf shafaf. Very clean now. One is you're clean, one is you're very clean. You took a shower, now you take another shower. Now you look even more bright. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same way, Rasulullah Islam was pak. He was clean, totally, you know, sinless. But now when he did the tawbah, nurun ala nur. He even, it even extended his nur and made him even more pure in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Nabi Islam mentioned this. Of course, we have to make the istighfar and the tawbah. What about us? If Nabi Islam said mia to mia, he used to do it a hundred times, so we should be thinking about a million a day. Allah Ta'ala knows best. May Allah Ta'ala give us the ability to make istighfar and tawbah and make sahih tawbah. Imam Nawi, Imam Nawi has mentioned the, you know, the sharayat and the conditions of tawbah are such is that a person, first of all, must hate the sin that he's done. He must hate it. He must regret also what he's done in the past. He must regret it, feel bad about it. Not that he's happy about it, he makes tawbah and he's laughing about it, but he should, regret, he should regret it also. And in the future, he should have a strong intention that he will never do it again. And one fourth thing that he mentions, if it happens to do with the hukuk of insan, for example, some money borrowed, you, did, you hit somebody, you did something wrong to somebody else, so tawbah will not alleviate that. You will have to go and ask the forgiveness for that person as well. Because the hukuk al ibad is even more scary than the hukuk of Allah Ta'ala. Because Allah Ta'ala is ghafoor rahim He is the one who forgives. He is the all-merciful. Chances are that Allah Ta'ala is going to forgive you if you make some mistake with Him. On the day of Qiyamah, if we did something to someone, and on the day of Qiyamah, people are standing and they're in need of some type of, uh, you know, uh, some type of reward and thawab. There's no other way to get it. Do you think that person on the day of Qiyamah, even if it's your own uncle, or maybe even your own father, and I'm not being vulgar by saying it, yawma yafirru mar'u min akhi wa ummihi wa abi, what do you think that ayat means? No one will care for anyone else. So if you did something wrong to someone else on the day of Qiyamah, chances are he's going to take his haq. He's not going to say that, oh Allah, I'll go to Jahannam, no problem. Chalo, go. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, right? And Black Friday, they don't even let you go, right? Black Friday also, they won't let you go. So what about on the day of Qiyamah? Right? If you're in the front door and the guy's in front of you, or there's some laptop or something that's going for $99.95, and it's usually $400, very rarely you'll see, right? The person. Hajjari Aswad, you'll never get there. The guy will elbow you and head bunch you before you, before you get to Hajjari Aswad. He's going to get there first. What about the day of Qiyamah? Impossible. That person, so and very important that in our tawbah, if we've done something wrong to someone, we should ask them for the forgiveness also. After this, Allah Ta'ala mentions that when you do the istighfar and tawbah, you matti'akum mata'an hasana. Allah Ta'ala will give you an enjoyment, a very beautiful thing, a very beautiful enjoyment, mata'an hasana. Allah Ta'ala will give you a very beautiful enjoyment after this. You matti'akum mata'an hasana ila ajalin musamma to a specific time. What does this mean? Allah Ta'ala giving us an enjoyment means that those people who do istighfar and tawbah, and while they're doing istighfar and tawbah, they're getting clean from their sin. And inshallah, if the tawbah is correct, they are not returning back to that also. 
So therefore, mashallah, these people have become very close to Allah Ta'ala. After that, then the rahat, the enjoyment, and the, uh, what we call afiyat, is then given by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala gives them enjoyment in this world. The ulama mentioned what is enjoyment? For example, Allah Ta'ala opens up the risk for him. Allah Ta'ala, the things around him, Allah Ta'ala opens up beautiful things around him. That not necessarily has to have a mansion, because if that was the case, we'd all be making tawbah 10 million times a day. But he gets those things which are very easy for him, happy. Right? It's not necessarily you have to have a beautiful car, but a car that a person is satisfied with. Alhamdulillah, this is good for me. And he gets good health, things like this. So the ulama say, this is what, yani, yumatti'kum mata'an hasana. Allah Ta'ala will give him a happy life, hayatun tayyibah. There's uh, indications of this also in Surah Nuh, where, Allah, where, uh, where the uh, Nabi Nuh alayhi salam told his people, that make istighfar to Allah Ta'ala, He will give you, you know, the children, He will give you gardens, He will give you money, He will give you all, you know, rivers, all good things. Meaning by tawbah and istighfar, a person gets the good things of this world. That's why Allah Ta'ala says, يُمَتِّعْكُمْ مَتَاعًا حَسَنًا إِلَىٰ أَجْلٍ مُسَمَّىٰ Ajal al-Musamma means in this dunya. This is not in regards to akhirah. Allah Ta'ala will give you the goodness in this world. So this is a good lesson for us because all the time, Mulvi Saab, only everything's in akhirah. Abhi ke liye kya hai? Right? What about for now? So this for now here. Okay? Now, we get the mashallah, the, we get the good rewards now. And you'll get the good things now by making istighfar and tawbah. Ila ajal al-Musamma are to a stipulated time, meaning hatta al-mawt, until you die. Then after that, Allah Ta'ala says, وَيُؤْتِ كُلِّ ذِي فَضْلٍ فَضْلَهِ And Allah Ta'ala will give, وَيُؤْتِ and, and, he, and, and Allah Ta'ala will give, كُلِّ ذِي فَضْلٍ فَضْلَهُ Every person who has good deeds with him, Allah Ta'ala will give him a gift. Uh, the ulama have said here that, ذِي فَضْل ذِي فَضْل means, yani, ذِي عَمَلٍ صالح. That person who has good deeds, the fadl here means good deeds. So when that person has good deeds, Allah Ta'ala will give him his fadl. Wa fadullahi ta'ala al-jannah. And the fadl of Allah Ta'ala is jannah. So not only in dunya, and the person will be left in the akhirat, but yu'ti kullaf di fadlin fadla, the person who comes with the good deeds and the amal and the tawbah and the istighfar, then Allah Ta'ala will give him his fadl. And that is Allah Ta'ala's great gift of jannah, the greatest gift a person can ever get. Then Allah Ta'ala, of course, after this, warns that if you turn away, you'll have a big problem. وَإِن تَوَلَّوْا And if you turn away, فَإِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ كَبِيرٍ Then I fear for you the punishment of a great day, meaning the day of Qiyamah, if you turn away from these advices that I've given you, and you don't make istighfar, you don't make tawbah, then your life in this world will be terrible. And of course, the عَذَابَ كُلَّ The عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ كَبِيرٍ that great punishment on a great day, which is the day of Qiyamah, that will grasp you as well. After this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a haqiqat which is for everyone. إِلَى اللَّهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Since the mushrik in Mecca, they used to not believe in the Qiyamah and didn't think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could possibly bring things which are dust into life. So Allah Ta'ala says, إِلَى اللَّهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ O Mushrikin Mecca, O you who believe that there won't be any return to Allah Ta'ala, إِلَى اللَّهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ Actually, it should be مَرْجِعُكُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ But here Allah Ta'ala has put His name first to show emphasis that it is to Allah Ta'ala definitely مَرْجِعُكُمْ your return. You will return to Allah Ta'ala every single one of you. وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And Allah Ta'ala is able to do all things. He can bring the dust and bring the dust which was insan in one day and then turn to dust. He can then turn that back to insan. In Surah Qiyamah, Allah Ta'ala gives you a more beautiful answer that forget about the insan. أَيُّ banana. We can even bring back your fingertips. Those fingerprints that you have, that now the police officers can catch you if you're a murderer, and each, each one is different. All the way 1400 years ago, 
where's the forensics and the FBI now? They were, where were they 1400 years ago? Allah Ta'ala was telling us 1400 years ago that we can bring back your fingertips, the fingerprints, which are all different. Each pattern will bring back, forget about your body, these patterns also will bring back on a day of Qiyamah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is ala kulli shayin qadir. He's able to do all things the day of Qiyamah is true because Allah Ta'ala is qadir. After this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about something that either the mu'mineen were doing, either the mushrikeen were doing, or the munafiqeen. There's three different shayin and nuzuls to the next ayat. Allah ta'ala says, أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ يَثْنُونَ صُدُورَهُمْ لِيَسْتَخْفُوا مِنْ أَلَا حِينَ يَسْتَغْشُونَ ثِيَابَهُمْ يَعْلَمُ مَا يُسِرُّونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ Allah Ta'ala says that let it be known إِنَّهُمْ يَثْنُونَ صُدُورَهُمْ That verily they are bending their chests يَثْنُونَ صُدُورَهُمْ means to do this to bend your chest to hide so verily they are bending their chests لِيَسْتَخْفُوا مِنْ so that they may hide from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or it could mean that so they may hide from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'll give you the, all the meanings why. Ala hina yastaghshuna thiyabahum. And let it be known that when they cover themselves with their clothes, when they cover their clothes, meaning they do this, when they do like this, when they cover themselves with their clothes, ya'lamu ma yusirruna wa ma yu'linun. Allah ta'ala knows that which they hide and that which they expose. إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ Allah Ta'ala knows all that which is in the heart. Ulama have mentioned three shani nuzul, meaning the reason why this ayat has come down is three possibilities. The most sahih possibility, some ulama say, because the riwayat is most sahih, from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, is that some of the Muslims had uh, become so shy in front of Allah Ta'ala. غَلْبَةُ hal we call it. That they started, of course, getting the ayat of Qur'an, they started reading that Allah Ta'ala knows everything. So since Allah, it was a hiqiqat and a reality to them, that Allah Ta'ala is watching me 24 hours a day. So when I go to the bathroom, if I happen to have relations at night with my wife, whatever it may be, now I'm exposing myself in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And He can see me. So the Sahaba, at times where you had to be exposed, when you go to the bathroom, Exposure is a must. When a person approaches his wife, many times exposure is a much, a must. So at these times they were doing different things in order to cover themselves up, which were too difficult. And Sahaba, of course, are the mi'yar. They are the examples for this ummah. So if they were that you know strong on themselves and difficult, then the later on the people like us, what will we do? We won't be able to handle that. So Allah Ta'ala mentions that Yani innahum yatnuna sudurahum li yastaqfumin. That when they are going to the bathroom or when they are doing something, they were bending down in order to cover up their private parts and they were quenching up. And when they are uncovering their clothes and they are under their clothes and trying to cover themselves, Allah Ta'ala knows what they, you know, what they are hiding and also what they are exposing. Meaning, oh Sahaba, you don't have to do this. I know what everything you are doing, you're going too far. Your haya is too much with Allah Ta'ala. إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ sudur. Allah Ta'ala knows what's in your heart, meaning Allah Ta'ala knows your taqwa, He knows your fear, and He knows that is according to dhururat and a need that you are exposing yourself in front of Allah Ta'ala. You are not exposing yourself because you're a person who has no shame. So that's the first meaning which many of the ulama have said from Ibn Abbas, it means that. Other ulama say that this means something that the mushrikeen Mecca used to do. That they used to hide and say different things about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When they saw Rasulullah, then they would bend down and they would go hide, and then they would gather and then they would all put their kapra like this around each other. Hey, Abu Jahl, and they would start speaking about this like that. So Allah Taala is indicating towards that that when you are trying to hide from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then you're gathering and you're covering up yourself with your clothes. And you're trying to now bring your chadar and your, your scarf and your cloak over you and trying to hide. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly what you are doing, what you are saying, the plans you are doing, what you're saying about Allah ta'ala and His Rasul, Allah knows it. 
And some ulama mention that this is for the munafiqeen. And it is allegorical. Meaning it is not really the fact that they are putting their, you know, uh, their clothes over them. But actually it is, uh, you know, metaphorical. That it is not mean that they're putting their clothes over. But this is, you know, Allah Ta'ala has metaphorically stated about their nifaq. That yani, hina yathnuna, yathnuna sudurahum. Yathnuna, I told you, means to hide in your heart. Meaning when you, start, when you hide your kufr and try to become like a mu'min. And then, yani, ala hina yastakshona, yastakshuna thiyabahum. And when, when you are now trying to cover up that nifaq, Allah Ta'ala knows what you are exposing and He knows what you are, you know, what you are hiding. In the Hu'alimu Bidat, the Sudul, Allah Ta'ala knows what's in the heart. If you are a munafiq, Allah Ta'ala knows, don't hide it, you know, become a mu'min, become a proper believer. So this, of course, also shows to us the Kamal Qudrat, because Allah Ta'ala just said, In the Hu'alimu, you know, Allah Ta'ala is ala kulli shayin qadir. He can bring everything, He's khabir. So Allah Ta'ala gives this example to show how great Khabiri is and how Qadiri is that though people hide things from him, but he still has the knowledge of it. Then after this, now we move into the 12th juz of Quran where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْكُهَا وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا so after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicated towards his great qudrat and his power and his great ilm, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicates towards another quality of his and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is razzaq. Allah ta'ala is the one who provides for everyone. So Allah ta'ala says that there is no animal in the earth except that it is the responsibility of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to sustain him. Whether it be the animals that walk on the ground, which is dabba, or whether it is in regards to the animals who fly in the skies like birds. And the ulama say that dabba means actually animals which walk on the ground. But since birds and eagles and these type of things, they also fly in the sky, but a large amount of their life is also spent on the ground as well when they eat and things like this. So the ulama have also entered the birds also amongst dabba as well. وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا Allah Ta'ala provides for it, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows it's mustaqarraha, its ending point, the place where it will reside. Mustaqar. The ulama have mentioned means its condition in akhirat, where it will reside forever and ever. Allah Taala knows that also. Wa mustawda'aha, and also when it passes away, and mustawda means yani their qabr, where they are, where they die and put into the ground. Allah Taala knows that as well. Kullun fi kitabim mubin, every single thing is in a book which is very clear, meaning lohim mahfuz, each animal its risk, its date of death, where it is, what it became, what it will become after, where every single thing about that animal is written in the Lohim Mahfuz, a book which is very clear and shows all things which Allah Ta'ala has done. Imam Qurtubi has mentioned one ajeeb qissa and shani nuzul of this ayat, where, not shani nuzul, but a story that the Ash'ari, uh, the Ash'ariyeen, Ash'ariyeen were from the Yemen, and they were a group of people who came to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and one outstanding quality of them was that they were very interested in aqaid, in the aqidah of a Muslim. When they accepted Islam, for example Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and many of the Ash'ariyeen who came, they were very interested in knowing about things that usually the Sahaba didn't ask about, aqidah, haqiqat of Allah Ta'ala, they were asking about these things and for some reason Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam opened up to them. He realized that these people, they had, you know, the good, uh, you know, iman. That's why they say, yani al imanu yaminiyun. The iman is from Yemen. The, the real people who understand iman, they are in Yemen. And to this day also, the ulama of aqaid, aqidah, they are very, very good in Yemen. So these people came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They learned some ilm and knowledge, and then they left Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When they left Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They had some rations, some bags of food with them, which had now gone empty. They didn't have any more food. And they had not completed their journey. And they were farther away from uh, Yemen than they were away from Mecca Mukarramah. 
So uh, they send a, one of their people back to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so they can go there and get some more rations and get some more food so that you know, he can come back and give them some food and things like this. So when this person came to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that, Oh Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our rations are finished. Can you please you know, get us some food? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to teach you know, these Sahaba. You obviously knew that they weren't dying, but you know, they need some food. So Nabi Sallallahu mentioned this ayat. وَمَا مِن دَابَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا And this uh, Sahabi, this person, this messenger, he had so much belief in Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and so much, you know, you know, yaqeen in Allah Ta'ala that very quickly he accepted this from Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he left with no meat or anything and went back very happily to say that, mashallah, a promise has come from Rasul about Allah Ta'ala that he will provide for us. So when he went back to the Ash'ariyeen, when he went back to them, so the Ash'ariyeen, they had understood from this person that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will soon, you know, send something. That Allah Ta'ala, he mentioned this ayat, but they understood that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will soon send something. As they were mentioning this and this conversation was going on, two men came with a large plate of meat and other food and they put it in from the Ash'ariyeen and they said, MashaAllah, Jazakum Allah Khair, and they eat until they were full. And they ate so much, so much food that there was some food left over also. And some of that food which was left over, they sent back to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When it was sent back to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was sent back with thanks also to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they understood, they thought that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sending some food after. Or ma'am in dabatin, he would just make some sabr, Allah Ta'ala will give a risk, and I'm sending something soon. So when they went back and they told Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that this is the food from the Ashari, it was so good, so much barakat also, and they've left some for you also, and they thank you for sending this food as well. It helped them. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I didn't send any food. I never sent any food to them. So obviously this was the risk of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala which came in the form of the malaika, the angels, and they came and they gave food to those Ashariyeen. So Imam Qurtubi has mentioned this kissa Allah Ta'ala knows best. Peter Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala after this mentions, وَهُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ وَكَانَ عَرْشُهُ وَكَانَ عَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَاءِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَلَئِن قُلْتَ إِنَّكُمْ مَبْعُوثُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ الْمَوْتِ لَيَقُولَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيَقُولَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's created the skies and the earth. Fi sittati ayyam in six days. Why Allah ta'ala keeps mentioning this? It is those makhluk, the samawati wal ard, which are the greatest makhluks of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one has ever laid claim that they have created them. And if the mushrikeen Mecca believe and think that Allah ta'ala cannot change dust into a human being, then look at the skies and the earth and see how great a creation it is and you will understand and see the great you know, qudrat and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fi sittati ayyam in six days. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created this, there was no sun and moon, so how was it six days? So the ulama mentioned that yani it's six days according to the time of that time when Allah Ta'ala created these uh, six days according to that time. And sittati ayyam Allah Ta'ala of course could have uh, you know, made this in the blink of an eye. Why six days? So the ulama mentioned this is yani ta'lim ta'anni. Yani to create this fikr and to teach insan that you do not do things hastily. I created the earth and the moon and the sun and everything in this world in six days. I could have done in the blink of an eye. But I took my time and I did it gradually. You also, insan, when you make something and do something, make sure you don't do it with hastiness. As in a hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an anatu min Allah. To not do things hastily, to do things gradually and with thought and to think out something before you do it, it's from Allah ta'ala. 
shaitan and hastiness. Shaitan quickly saying that Adam is, you know, weaker than me. He is made out of sand, I'm made out of fire. This was ujla from shaitan. He was actually wrong in his qiyas and his analogy anyway. Because we know the sand and the water which he's made out of Adam alayhi salam, it puts out fire. These are the things that put out fire also. So don't be ujla, don't be hasty like shaitan. Do not do hastiness. Take your time and think about things before you do it. And the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was created already, alalma it was on water. The ulama show us and tell us here that alma was one of the first things that are created even before the skies and the earth, Allah ta'ala created water. As Allah Ta'ala mentions in another ayat, وَجَعَلْنَا الْمَاءَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ Exactly, Hafiz. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءَ وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ We have made from water every single thing which is, which is alive. Everything which is alive has come from water. So the ingredient and the thing, every single thing which is living in this earth, its actual yani, uh, beginning of existence was from water. Allah Ta'ala created it from water. So water was already there and the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sitting on water as well. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا And this large sky and this earth, what is it for? It is a test for insan. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ So Allah Ta'ala may test you that who does the best deeds in this world. It's a great large world with so many components. But the maqsad and purpose is very, very easy and small. Even we do these type of things. Anyone who has fish, right? Fish? You have fish? You put it in a beautiful fish bowl, right? There's a little sea man in there on the bottom. There's beautiful leaves, trees, everything inside there. But the purpose is not what? It's not the fish bowl. Who is it? It's the fish. Once he dies, you throw out the fish bowl. It's the fish that's the purpose inside there. Even though all those things are so incredible, and you spend probably more money on the bowl than the fish. Allah Ta'ala creates insan just like this. Six days to create the whole world. But inside there is a maqsad and a purpose that is the insan. Right? So don't be confused about how great this world is and don't think that these ama that we're doing are very insignificant. No, they're not insignificant. They are very significant. This whole world which is surrounding has been created for that purpose. That inside that world you do good deeds. Inside that world. Even our houses. Right? We build them so beautiful and great. Is the maqsad the purpose the house? No. The purpose is that our little son can sit and he can sleep, you know, in comfort and in safety. And he can be happy also. That's the purpose. If na'udhu billah, may Allah ta'ala protect, if our son gets taken away from us, the house is worthless, right? We don't even care about the house. We don't even care about it. So in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created so many million billion things around us which have so much great enormous size and great enormous importance. But the most important thing is that this insan living in this world, he does good deeds. That's what Allah Ta'ala wants. He's the creator, he can make the maqsad and purpose, whatever he wants. So the reason why Allah Ta'ala has created it, لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ He has created it so that he can test, he can test you, أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala That which one of you are doing the good deeds. Peer Allah Ta'ala after this mentions, the rad and the rejection of the mushrik in Mecca. وَلَئِنْ قُلْتَ إِنَّكُمْ مَبْعُوثُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ الْمَوْتِ And if, O oh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you tell them that they will be raised after death, so what will they say? لَيَكُولَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Verily those, surely those who have disbelieved will say, إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ That this is only but clear magic. You're a magician, O oh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you tell us where, where you know, that we're going to be raised on the day of Qiyamah, in your eloquent speech, we'll say you're possessed. You're a magician. This is magic what you're doing. You're possessing the people. After this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَلَئِنْ أَخَّرْنَا عَنْهُمُ الْعَذَابَ إِلَىٰ أُمَّةٍ مَعْدُودَةٍ لَيَقُولُنَّ لَيَقُولُنَّ مَا يَحْبِسُهُ أَلَا يَوْمَ يَأْتِيهِمْ لَيْسَ مَصْرُوفًا عَنْهُمْ وَحَاقَ بِهِمْ وَحَاقَ بِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَهْزِئُونَ Allah Ta'ala mentions, وَلَئِنْ أَخَّرْنَا عَنْهُمُ الْعَذَابِ 
And if we delay the punishment for them, إِلَىٰ أُمَّةٍ مَعْدُودًا To a specific time. Meaning if we delay the punishment, we don't punish them now, then even there they are not making shukr. And they are not being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even there, they are not saying that Alhamdulillah, shukr, Allah ta'ala is very, very kind, he's halim. Let us now bring iman. Even if we delay the punishment, they still is making them mourn kufr. And they'll say, لَا يَقُولُنَّ مَا يَحْبِسُ They will say, what's holding back the punishment? Bring it to us. What's holding it back? This was the boldness of these mushrik in Mecca. Allah Ta'ala then mentions and warns, أَلَا يَوْمَ يَأْتِيهِمْ لَيْسَ مَسْرُوفًا عَنْهُمْ Ah, when the day will come, لَيْسَ مَسْرُوفًا عَنْهُمْ It will not be turned away from them. That day when it comes, this punishment will not be turned away from them. It will come upon them. وَحَاقَ بِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَهْزِيُونَ And it will surround them that which they used to make fun of. That punishment that they used to make fun of and made a joke out of, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then surround them with that thing and the joke will be on you. Basically Allah Ta'ala is saying, that you joked about the day of Qiyamah, you joked about the punishment, now the joke is on you. And that which you used to joke about, it has now surrounded you and now you are enshrouded in the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq and the ability to understand these ayat. May Allah Ta'ala give us the fear of Allah Ta'ala who is Hakim and Khabir. And may Allah Ta'ala give us the fear of His punishment. And also, may Allah Ta'ala give us the hope of His maghfirat and His rahmah. And may Allah Ta'ala give us the understanding of these beautiful ayat which Allah Ta'ala has indicated to us so many things. We can go back and read these ayat again with our own tafsirs in our house, Ma'arafu Quran. Whatever you know, tafsir you have in your house, look it over and see. There's obviously more discussions in it. We only have a little time, but uh, basically, inshallah, whatever we, what's supposed to be known in this ayat, we explain that. Allah Taala accepted from us. Jazakumullah khair. Wa alhamdulillah.